So vitamin D is our other area that we need to target drug therapy. So let's review vitamin D synthesis really quick. So we get vitamin D from two places. We get it from our skin, so the sun exposure, and we get it from food. So the vitamin D that we get from the sun, the inactive product is D3 or cholecalciferol. And the product that we get from food is ergocalciferol or D2. So these products are both activated in the liver to 25 hydroxy vitamin D. And this is still our inactive product. So then it goes to the kidney um, and is activated to the active vitamin D product, the 125 hydroxy, dihydroxy vitamin D. And then that goes and has its biological actions, which are increasing the calcium absorption from the GI system, also has some direct effects on phosphorus and IPTH as well. So here are our drug treatment options for our inactive products. But again, once we lose the ability, or once the patient's kidney loses the ability to activate the vitamin D, then our active vitamin D products need to be the target for drug treatment. So let's begin with inactive vitamin D. Because early stages in chronic kidney disease, the kidney still maintains the ability to convert inactive to active. So we want to start with inactive treatment if we need it. So the recommendations by KDGO, KDGO are to use inactive vitamin D when IPTH is increased and inactive vitamin D levels are less than 30. So 30 tends to be 30 nanograms per mil is our goal. Um, so you would measure the inactive vitamin D level and see if the IPTH is elevated and if those two things are, are occurring then we're gonna treat with inactive vitamin D. So something that's not recommended in the guidelines but is done in clinical practice is that even if the IPTH is not elevated, if the inactive vitamin D level is low, then we'll still go ahead and treat the low inactive vitamin D level in order to prevent any future increases in the IPTH level. Our products are ergocalciferol and cholecalciferol. They're readily available in multiple different dosage forms, anywhere from 500 international, 200 international units, up to 50,000 international units. So several different dosage forms available. That's why you're going to see variations in dosing. Again, evidence not strong for which specific dose we should give. Therefore, you see different doses given in many, many different ways. Many times you'll see those very, very high doses, such as those 50,000 international units given weekly or monthly for a period of time until the inactive vitamin D level goes above 30, and then more maintenance doses given at the lower level, such as the 800 international units. Side effects, very small changes in calcium potentially. Again, thinking about the process of active vitamin D or the process of vitamin D synthesis and production to the active vitamin D and active vitamin D having those effects on increasing calcium absorption from the GI system. Um, however, with inactive vitamin D, you see very small, maybe not even any changes in calcium. In addition, you can see an increase in phosphorus as well.